There are so many design trends that look great in photos but are super impractical in real life. Following on from my first video, here's another 7 trends that you should think twice before incorporating them into your own home. Many living rooms have their lounges arranged around a fireplace, so it often seems logical to put the TV above the fireplace. However, a TV in this location is quite impractical and often detracts from the beauty of the fireplace. The main issue is that the viewing angle is way too high, which makes watching TV a lot like sitting in the front row of a cinema. You only end up getting neck pain. That being said, you can probably get away with it if you only watch your TV occasionally. In this case, I would suggest getting a frame TV, so it can be integrated into your living room as an artwork when it is not in use. You don't want an ugly black box TV as a centerpiece detracting from the beauty of your fireplace. If you do watch your TV often and have nowhere else to place them, I'll suggest getting something like a mantle mount. This will allow you to pull the TV down and in front of the fireplace so it is at a proper viewing height and return them once it's done. Just be careful of the heat from your fireplace and do proper research and installation to make sure it is safe. If possible, consider other parts of the living area for your TV or put it in another room altogether. Open showers are very aesthetically pleasing, but the problem is that they are often not designed or constructed properly. There are a few types of open showers including ones with glass partitions, ones with wall partitions, and ones that are totally open in the room. The main issue with them is splash zone management and drainage. Poor design can result in water going everywhere with nowhere to drain. This mainly happens with open showers that don't have a long enough partition to stop water splashing onto other bathroom surfaces. If you're thinking about getting an open shower, make sure the piece of glass or a half wall is adequately extended past the splash zone. Open showers also aren't that suited to heavily air-conditioned houses or ones in humid or tropical climates as it takes forever for water to dry up. They are more suited to dry climates or spaces that have extra heating, such as heated flooring, as they will help water dry out quicker. Having a floor that slopes towards the drain or a floor that is recessed down is also very important for water management, so you don't have to squeegee or mop the floor after every use. Finally, consider the size of the open shower, as large ones tend to get very cold, unless you have extra heating in the bathroom. As long as they are done correctly, open showers can look great and make a small bathroom feel much bigger. Barn doors have been all the rage on Pinterest for a while now, especially in farmhouse style homes. While the trend is starting to die down a little, a lot of builders still like to include barn doors, even in places where it doesn't make sense. The main benefit of barn doors is that they're somewhat space saving. They are hung on a sliding track which means that you don't need extra space to accommodate for a door swing, although it does take up some extra wall space. But the big issue is that they don't create a seal when closed, which means that they don't hold in sound and odor. As you can imagine, this is a big problem for bathrooms, unless you want to announce to everyone the outcome of your last spicy meal. They also offer no privacy, as there's often a small gap between the door and walls that you can see through, so it is often not ideal for bedrooms. These gaps resulted in poor thermal insulation which will increase your electricity bill. Having said that, there are certain situations where barn doors can be functional. It is a great way to divide an open plan space that doesn't require privacy, like a playroom or a lounge room. It is also a great way to divide smaller spaces like a pantry or closet, while adding an architectural feature. It can also work great for laundry rooms, as they don't block moisture in. Just be aware of the potential noise if they are located near your living space or bedroom. Floating staircases are super popular in contemporary homes, as they look like they are floating in space without any support structures. They open up a space and make it feel a lot roomier. But like all the trends in this video, they are not practical in all living situations. This is mainly the case for households with pets, children, or elderly people as floating staircases can quickly become a safety hazard. Floating staircases do not have risers, the vertical section between the staircase treads, which can often become dangerous if you lose your footing. This can lead to very serious injuries. It is even worse when people violate safety codes by not having a handrail to increase the floating illusion. It just makes people more likely to fall. If you are young and healthy, have no children or pets, and are not living with the elderly, a floating staircase can be very impressive. Just make sure everything follows building standards, hire a good builder, make sure step height and depth is consistent, and use quality materials. 
Don't skim out here as even the smallest construction flaws can be fatal. Zellige tiles are artisan tiles originating from Morocco. They are made from a blend of non-refined clays that are shaped, hand-cut, glazed, and then fired, meaning that every tile has slight variations. When they are placed side by side, the result is an undulating surface that has a water-like quality. At the moment, they are super trendy and are seen in all the design magazines, whether they are used as bathroom tiles, floor tiles, or kitchen backsplashes. While I do think that they look really, really gorgeous, be aware that you may have to manage your expectations. Firstly, they're very expensive. The manufacturing process is extremely labor-intensive and is done on a very small scale, which drastically increases cost. You've also probably noticed from images that their surfaces are often pitted and pockmarked. To get the best results similar to those you see on magazines, you have to purchase quite a large amount of surplus tiles than what you're going to use and then handpick the best ones. For many people, this will blow the budget. Another important tip is to make sure your tilers are mixing them up uniformly, so you can get that perfect but random look. Unlike subway tiles, you can't just open each box and install as you go, due to the irregularities, which can be a double-edged sword. Alternatively, lay everything out on the floor in the pattern you want before installing them, so that they are well mixed. At the end of the day, they are not necessarily impractical in the traditional sense, but rather in terms of cost and installation. As long as you can do them right, I do think that they're really, really beautiful. While chandeliers over bathtubs look romantic, they often pose a massive health and safety risk if they are hung too low. The standard code is that a pendant light needs to be hung with a minimum of an 8-foot distance from the highest point of the bathtub to the bottom of the light fixture. These rules have been put in place to prevent people from grabbing a pendant if they accidentally slip in the bathtub. Be aware that there can be variations to these rules depending on where you live. Most bathrooms do not have enough clearance to have a chandelier above a bath which abides by these codes, so it is usually not a good design option. Additionally, most chandeliers are not made for damp locations, so if you do have taller than average ceilings and this is an option for you, you need to make sure that your chosen light fixtures is rated as safe for bathrooms. Often, people want to put their desk in the middle of their home office as it makes the space look more professional. But in most cases, it can be quite an impractical room layout. The main issue is access to power points. Unless your space has a power point built into the floor, you will have cords running all around the space which will look cluttered and become a tripping hazard. Even with cable management clips and other similar products, there's almost no way to avoid cords laid out all over the floor. It is also not suited for smaller rooms, as it will impede upon traffic flow and make it difficult to walk around that room. Having said that, with proper planning and a bigger size room, it is definitely a viable option that looks and functions great. If you haven't watched the first video from this series, be sure to do so right here. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.